Welcome back to another episode of Dirt to Dust, you guys. I am Caleb here with Doug Langford. And in addition to the normal podcast, long form content, uh, we want to be able to get a way to answer your direct questions out. Uh, Doug and I are on Facebook a lot. We see a lot of questions come across different groups that we are a part of that um, we think that might actually benefit a lot of people knowing the answers too. So without further ado, let's jump right into this and uh, let's do a quick couple question, dirt to dust, mail call. When other people see dirt, you see glory. And when you see a vehicle for the first time, your first thought is not how pretty it is, but how much abuse can it take? This is Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Off-Road. If it's anything off-road and dirty, we probably like it, and we're probably talking about it. You'll get industry info, tech talk, and interviews with the biggest and best in the industry. Let's do it. This is Dirt Dirt to Dust. Dust. And now your hosts, Doug Langford and Caleb Forbes. You got mail. All right, Doug. In your professional experience, um, there's a really good question on the JL Wrangler owners group from Mr. John Hicks. He said, I'm currently installing a Curry Extreme 60 axle in my 2022 Wrangler JLU with a four and a half inch rock crawler suspension lift. I will also be using a top mount drag link. I'm having issues finding a track bar relocation bracket that works with the one ton axles. Do you have any ideas that can help me? Oh boy. That's a lot of, that's a lot of information. Okay. So he's got a JL. Uh, he's putting, he said Curry, Curry 60s. Extreme 60s. Yes. Okay. Oh, good, good axle. Mm-hmm. Solid axle. A lot like the ones on the race car. The race Absolutely. car has a Curry 70. So not a, not a ton of difference there, but a really, really solid axle platform. So I'm familiar with that axle. I'm also familiar with how Curry mounts that track bar. Um, and his question is, he said he was going to do the top mount, but he can't find an, he can't find an axle side reload, Correct. right? That's what he said. Okay. So what he's talking about, um, for those who don't know, when you look at steering geometry on a Jeep, um, I'm not going to get too crazy into it. So Google this if you if you want some more information. You want your drag link and your uh, track bar. You want them, A, you want them parallel with each other as close as humanly possible. And in general, you like them as parallel with the ground as possible. The problem with lifting them is, is you change the angle. So if it's like this... Now it's like this. Um, that was a real big problem on the JK. And then like at three and a half inches of lift or so, we would start talking about doing what's called a high steer flip, which is basically just where you take the axle side of the, or the knuckle side of the drag link and you flip it onto the top of the little arm instead of on the bottom. It's, I think for this guy, I know what he's trying to do and I wouldn't do it. Um, the JL really doesn't need to be flipped at four and a half or under if you're using the proper aftermarket uh, drag link, that could be rock crawler, that could be steer smarts, it could be RPM. It just depends on the joint. I know for a fact you don't need it with a rock crawler one or a steer smarts one because I've used both. I've run the rock crawler one on my old Wrangler at like four and a half or five, and I didn't have to flip it. the The joint has enough misalignment in it where it works. And the steer smarts one, I am lifted that much on forty six ninety nine on the race car. That is exactly the amount of lift that we're talking about. And I don't do it. The reason I wouldn't do it is just because two reasons, big time. Once you flip the drag link, you're going to limit your up travel because your drag link, when the tire is coming up, especially on the passenger side, you're going to run a much greater risk of slamming that drag link into the frame rail. Uh, And if you go out to your Jeep right now, for all of you out there, go look. It looks like there's a lot of space in there right now. You flip that drag link, you just removed about four inches of that space. Um, So that's a problem where like even on the JK platform, we used to like notch out and make a little a little path, a little barrel in there and like a little, some little cave in the frame and you could just be getting into stuff you don't need to get into. So, um, and then the second reason would be you're raising that, uh, because you've raised it knuckle side on the drag link. Now he, what he's wanting to do is flip it and then raise it axle side and he can't find something to lift it up that generally it's about like three and an eighth or three and a quarter inches, I think is the actual number that they're doing. Um, and then it moves it, it moves it horizontally a little bit too. 
it's 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 the difference between you know force here versus force here. You're changing it. You're more likely to have, like we talked about in one of our, our last episode, the Ultra Four episode on on dirt to dust. You're more likely to now have wallowing out. And if I wallowed one out at that height, you imagine what you're going to do. So there's there's plenty of them that you can do it. I think Artec makes a bracket. There's places that can do it, but if you're going four and a half, I I, I just wouldn't do it for those reasons. Um, it's too likely you're going to be drag link interference with frame rail and you just don't need to, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You don't need to raise it like that on the axle side. You've already got a good axle. Everything's pretty strong. You're not going to notice a big difference in driving ability and steering and bumps. You're just not, not on the JL. If it was a JK, different story, but on a JL and by extension JT, um, my recommendation, uh, leave it alone. Keep it bottom slung, mount it to the factory, mount it to the axle, uh, the track bar axle side mount that Curry gives you and put that under slung on the drag link and and be happy. Now, does Curry offer a track bar that has a higher mounting point to get that level with the drag link uh, for those who are lifted like four and a half, maybe or a little more? No, I mean, there's some things you can, I know there's some things you can dial in with caster and stuff to get them built. But again, especially on the JL and JT platform, it's just not needed. Like, yeah, I've run JLs and JTs everywhere from two and a half to five and a half inches of lift. I've run them on shocks. I've run them on coilovers. And the only time I ever really could have top flipped it would have been when I was on like 42s and five and a half inches lifted on coilovers. And even then, I, I ended up flipping it back over um, because, and I didn't have any drag link clearance, but that was because I was lifted almost six freaking inches. But that's about how high you got to go to where you're confidently clearing the drag link to the frame. So my main concern is drag link to frame clearance, and it's just not worth it. You don't need it. Like you're installing parts you don't need to install, and you're buying stuff you don't need to buy. I just, my recommendation would be just to not do Leave it. it alone. So basically ha- have a Leave good quality, easier to resell. Good quality too. drag link that's Didn't adjustable. Uh, have something yeah. that's pretty heavy duty. Don't worry about flipping it over the knuckle. You're going to be fine. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I can tell you from experience, from firsthand, the the rock crawler drag link works fine with that. Plenty of misalignment, as as does the uh, the steer smarts one. the The steer smarts one's on Good the race know. car, so I can say confidently that they will work with the setup. That what's it, Hicks Wicks, John, John Hicks, yeah, mm-hmm. Mister John, John, yeah, John John Hicks. What uh, your your setup? You're fine. Just run it that way and 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 be happy and awesome. roll on. Question number two, we're going to have, we're going to pull from uh, the YouTube channel. We did a video uh, last year talking about gears. Now that video has somewhere around 38,000 views, which is awesome. I have to respond to comments every single day <laughs> crazy. Uh, asking what Seriously. gear should I get for my vehicle? And it's really hard to, to, oh, to yeah. tell someone their exact setup. Just call an outlaw. <laughs> we were enough. We got enough locations in the southeast that we can we can dial in your gears for you. No problem. Uh, but for those who just kind of want a general you're going to give me one yeah. anyway, though, aren't you? Uh, yeah, you're going to. For those Go who ahead. just kind of have the it's general question fine. of why do I need gears? Why Why am I spending, we'll, we'll call it the price rate ranges, but it's somewhere in the range of $1,800 to $2,500 for gears that I can't even see. So what are the major benefits to re-gearing? Yeah, it's the most money you should ever spend on your Jeep that will do... <sighs> Welcome to the 21st century. I guess you're not going to see it. You're not gonna. You're not going to be able to go to your local cars and coffee or whatever. You're like, dude, those are some sweet gears, bro. It's not going to freaking happen. Um, so yeah, it's not visual. Everybody, that is kind of the complaint. I can't see it. They don't want to do it. Um, Facebook groups are littered with the. Oh, don't you don't have to re gear and these. For lack of a better term, I guess we're not. We're we're not on cable. We're kind of on cable here. They're freaking idiots. I get so sick and tired of these stupid idiots. They're like, you don't need to re-gear for 40s. I'm like, dude, shut up. It's like, sit down before you hurt yourself. Like, you know, you don't really need to do it. Like, okay, just tell me you can't afford to re-gear without telling me you can't afford to re-gear. Like, come on, man. Do you need to re-gear? Yes, of course you need to re-gear. If you didn't need to re-gear, then Jeep would just have like manually selectable gear ratios or something stupid like gear ratio matters it matters for fuel efficiency it matters for what gear your transmission is it matters what your rpms are at on the highway it matters for off-roading it matters for taking off from a stoplight like there's really not a lot of situations where gears don't matter 
unless you're Joe Bob on the internet who doesn't want to re-gear and wants to justify to everybody else why he didn't re-gear is because his buddy who's a mechanic told him he shouldn't re-gear. Well, that buddy needs to have his wrenches Should. taken out of his hand. So yeah, so you need to all pros, Like it helps everything. All pros, no cons. Give me the top three benefits to oh, yeah. re-gearing. Uh, fuel economy is, is going to be a big one. If you want to get it back now, I get you're not regearing unless you're going big tires and you're already losing fuel economy. So I get that argument. Like, why did I buy a Jeep if I didn't care about fuel economy? Okay. And I, of all people understand that 4699 gets like four miles to the gallon. I'm with you guys. I totally understand it, but you know, I don't do things based on my financial situations for customers. I don't tell people what to do based on my personal opinions doesn't matter. I shouldn't say whether or not a customer should do something based on their financial situation. I'm just going to tell them they need to do something based on whether or not they need to do it. If they want to do it or they can't afford to do it or they can't afford to do it or they don't want to do it, that's on them. But it's pretty black and white of whether or not you should do it. So fuel economy is one. Um, a big one is um, component longevity. So like mainly in the transmission, like you look at the JT and the JL with an eight speed, and you don't re-gear and you go up to 37s, 38s, 39s, whatever, and you turn your eight speed into a five speed or a six speed, um, you're over revving that thing. That's not good for its life long right. term. Like it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out that you shouldn't, you, you know, you shouldn't be doing that. And then the other one would be uh, probably the most common complaint of why people want to re-gear is they put big tires on there and then the mm -hmm. Jeep won't go. And that works for Jeeps. That where we see it on Toyotas, we see it on F 150s. Like I put these big tires on there and now the vehicle just doesn't want to go. And I'm like, well, you're not right. geared right. Like it makes a difference, makes a huge, huge difference in the effort the engine and the overall vehicle take to get you up to speed. So that's one of the things you'd feel the most is just that kind of get up and go. I don't know if that's in any particular order. I know you asked that, but uh, just top I just got off that. on my little why you read it. Yeah, that definitely works. So we got fuel economy, better fuel economy, better torque off the line, and better component longevity um that's exactly what i was speaking to and that's a proper torque like it's not even just better it's proper. proper like i can give you different gear ratios to give you screaming off the line but then it's crap at highway speed or i can give you something that's crazy highway speed but crap off the line but you know when we're re-gearing something aside from a specific instruction from a customer we're trying to get it back to as close as factory mm -hmm. as possible um mm -hmm. We generally will err a little bit on the torque side just because that's what we are, but we we try to get as close to proper torque um, and proper low end power as as possible per how it was when it rolled off the show. Which before. should be everyone's goal, no matter what tire size, whether that's a 35 or a 42, it Agreed. needs to feel like factor. As close as you can get. All right, I think get. we've got time for one more question. What else you got um, for me? This comes from a Jeep Gladiators only group, uh, Bill Lancelotta. Um, Posted and said, do you guys have any recommendations on tires? Uh, I want to go a little bigger, but I don't want to change the ride. Okay. First of all, I question if that's his real last name, because I know a lot of people get on Facebook and they make up these crazy last names. And I'm all I see is like, I, when you said Lancelotta, I'm thinking like Monty <laughs> Python and like, we're making fun of Lancelot, like Lancelotta. So I don't know if that Kyle, if that is your last name, that's pretty cool. But I don't know. I have I have my suspicions, but uh, bigger tires. He said he doesn't want to change Does the ride. Not want to change the ride, but definitely wants to go a little bigger. I, I don't. I think he's probably referring to like maybe like a well, thirty-four, thirty-five. Yeah, he can't. He can't do that. Like it's not going to happen, guys. <laughs> it's not, not going to happen. You're not going to change tires and go bigger and not change the ride. Like it's just not going to happen. So why is that? Uh, that's a ton of reasons. First of all, I, I'm assuming he's got stock like the 255s on there right now? Or did he say, did he say what he had on there right now? Probably the stock 255, yeah, whatever. Yeah, to me from, from this picture. Or is he, the stock, or is he like the 255, 75, 17. Okay. So he's like an overland or a sport, something like that. So that tire is a somewhat mildly aggressive highway tread. It's not a real all-terrain. It's not a mud terrain, any of that. So the moment you change, you go bigger, nobody's putting a 35-inch highway tread on their Jeep. So you're going to be putting an AT and RT or an MT on there. We already know this, that right off the bat ride has changed. Um, the second thing that's probably going to change is probably going to be your ply count. Um, generally speaking, the tires that come on those are like SLs or P's. They're not even going to be their passenger tires. They're not even like 
C range, D range, E range, F range load it. They're not even rated for that. If you don't know what that is, Google that. Tire load ratings or load ranges or load ratings, C, D, E, and F. Um, and a lot of these guys, some of these companies that make tires, a lot of these guys, we get it all the time in the shops. I want X tire. They, they're very specific on the tire they want. They're not going to, they're not going to listen to you, but maybe it only comes in a D or an E. Well, that's a thicker treaded tire, a thicker sidewall. Um, it's going to ride firmer. It just is. You get a 10 ply Nitto Ridge Grappler. Nitto Ridge Grappler is a great tire, but it's not going to ride like your dual or AT that you had from the factory. So, and then tire pressures come in and the chalk testing and all that. So, I mean, the short answer is you're not going to get a bigger tire and change your tire and, and not change your ride quality. There are things you can do to mitigate that, right? There are. You can drop your tire pressure to the proper tire pressure via a chalk test. You should Google that. All the, Everybody should be doing the chalk test, not just this guy, Mr. Sir Lancelotta. I just want, I just want awesome. to call him Sir Lancelot. It's so awesome. But um, just to so, give, yeah, not just Sir Lancelot. Yeah, just to give him a little bit of an answer, though, let's throw out um, – Let's throw out three of our favorite tires. Uh, let's go on the all terrain. It sounds like he's wanting more of an all terrain tire. Uh, let's throw th three tires out Probably that is. we would market. recommend had he come to an outlaw location. Uh, my number one is what I run personally on my truck. I've run it on several of my vehicles is the somewhat newer. It's not as new now. It's been out for a while now. The Mickey Thompson Baja Boss AT. Um, I love it mainly because of the road noise. It is one of, if not the quietest tire um, on the market for an AT. I run it in a 37 on my F350. That is also the same truck that pulls the race trailer everywhere across the country. Obviously, I run the MT on the race car, but that's, a, that's different. Um, so, yeah, I love the Mickey Thompson Baja Boss AT. It also looks really cool. It's got just enough aggression to it to make it look mean, but not so much that it's blah, 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 shaking the car every time right. you go through a parking lot. So that's, that's my favorite one, um, by far. And they've got more than just that in an AT, but that's the one I really, really like. Um, I've also run, um, and, and I'm six one, half a dozen the other on this one is either the Nitto Recon Grappler or Nitto Ridge Grappler. Both Good tires. tires. Um, Both I don't think they're quite, I think on road, they're not quite as quiet as the Mickey, but you know, the Mickey guys are going to say the Mickey's are quieter than NATO's guys are going to say right. the Mickey's are quieter. I, you know, it's right. six, one, half of those, the other, those are, they're all top level tires. I just choose personally. I was running Mickey before I was sponsored by him. Full disclosure. I mean, I got sponsored by them after I was running them on personal vehicles. Last year I was running. I ran Nitto's on my race car and Mickey's on my race trail, on my race rig, on my race truck, the tow rig. So, you know, that certainly is not me just being a homer. Um, I became a homer because I was already running their stuff. And then I'd say number three for me, it's not as aggressive on the appearance, but it is still very quiet and, and performs really well as the Falcon Wild Peak AT3, which I think they just released the AT4. Yeah, great, great tire. Um, I really recommend that tire for somebody who wants to look, but is not, you know, the mall crawler. They're not going to go and wheel it a lot, but they want that look. Um, it's hard to beat the Falcon AT. Not as aggressive as the Ridge Grappler, not as aggressive as the Baja Boss, uh, but still a pretty great tire in its own right. And I've actually had an opportunity to go to Falcon. I did their Falcon Tire Academy back several years ago and was able to actually test those tires on a wide range of vehicles from grocery getters all the way to actually running us out off road out in Southern California and, um, yeah, I don't, I don't really have anything negative, negative to say about him. John Schaefer, we talked about him in the last podcast, 4688 was running Falcons, uh, on a, on, uh, on a race car that finished King of the Hammers Absolutely. this year. So can't, can't say much <laughs> bad about that. So that was three questions. Uh, guys, if you have any questions for us, that's, that's, it. that's, that's all, all you got, got for me. Day. We are running out of time. Uh, Give us, Give some, us more some questions. questions. If, uh, if you watch the podcast, if you've got some questions, if you watch the YouTube channel or if you're on different groups and you want a kind of a direct answer, shoot us those questions. We will absolutely try our best to, to spend once a week to answer a couple questions at a time. Until then, we've got another episode of Dirt and Dust coming out here in a couple days. Be sure to tune into that if you like the long form content. If you like the short form, tune into these weekly questionnaires that we will call the mailbag. And until then, we will catch you on the next one. And remember, there are no dumb questions, only dumb people. I kid, but seriously, you're a dumb people if you say you don't need to re-gear. All right, that's all I got. I had to get my moment in. Sorry. You've been listening to Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Off-Road, the premier off-road centers for Jeeps, trucks, and SUVs. Sounds a little bit arrogant, doesn't it? 
Oh, well. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. Be sure to tell your friends about the show, too. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, to see more and to see what Outlaw Off-Road offers, hit the website at theoutlawoffroad.com. See you next time. Don't follow us. You're not going to make it.